Why are we interested in the motion of a string? Well, maybe you play an instrument like the violin or the guitar, so you have some intrinsic interest. But apart from that, there are actually a lot of reasons, both from a physical and a mathematical viewpoint, to look into this. These equations apply also to other slender objects, like cables, and the procedure can be generalized to describe beam-like objects, long bridges, towers, and so on. In the latter cases, the equations will be different, of course, but the underlying ideas are the same. And also from a mathematical viewpoint, this problem is interesting. We will get to the wave equation, which is our second important class of PDEs. And when you continue in physics, you will learn that many more phenomena are described by a wave equation in subjects like electromagnetism and quantum mechanics. So this is why our humble string is so interesting, because this is where it all starts. So first, how are we going to describe our string? So here we have a couple of string. And first of all, we describe it in some standard position. Say it's just lying. And then we describe it by the variable capital X, which is the uh, so-called Lagrangian coordinate. This capital X say, uh, describes a string which is just lay lying there, and all parts of the string have their own capital X. So we have our capital X1, capital X2, capital X3, capital X4. All points on the string have their own capital X, capital X, capital X. And no matter where the string moves through space, the capital X, its Lagrangian coordinates, always stays attached to this specific point on the string. So that's one way to describe the string. Tell a, uh, every part has its own capital X. But then it starts to move. So what's that? How are we going to describe the motion of a string? At a certain point it moves to some position in space. Then we describe it by its position r, x, y, z in general, depending on capital X and T. So our capital X1 is mapped to some point r of X1 and T. And our capital X2, for example over here, is mapped to some point r of X2 and T. So our goal is to find our function r of capital X and T. If we know this function r, then we know where our string is in space. So that is the end goal. So how do we get there? First we will do some geometry. An Im important aspect of the string is a so-called stress ratio, which is the norm of drdx. So what does that mean? If you have a small element in space, ds, so the ds over here, for example, you can compute it uh, by taking dr dx times dx, like this. this. This always holds. And since we have de defined the norm of the r dx as our lambda, we know that the ds equals lambda times dx. So what does this tell us? Well, if our lambda equals 1, then our ds equals dx, they are the same. So the distance in the new configuration is the same as the distance in the uh, reference configuration. So we are doing something like this. We are not stretching the, the, the string. However, if our lambda becomes bigger than 1, and we're doing something like this, we are stretching our string, and the ds becomes larger uh, than the dx. Which means by uh, 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 which means that so so that is why this lambda is called a stretch ratio. You can also see if you want to compute the total length of the string. Maybe this form formula is familiar to you. Total length equals integral from zero to l over the ds. So that's the stretch ratio, important quantity. Second important quantity is the unit tangent. So if you have some parametric curve r of x and t, then you can compute its tangent always as t equals dr dx. And now we often need to use the unit tangent, 
So how do we find the unit tangent? We have to divide the RDX by its length. So t hat equals 1 over the norm of the RDX times the RDX. But this norm of the RDX was called lambda. So our t hat equals 1 over lambda times the RDX, our second important player. And finally, we're going to look into some conservation of mass. So first we are in our reference configuration, and then we take some part of the string with size dx. Then we have some mass, which is rho zero, just its density if it's lying there, rho zero times dx. Now we're going to move around and to stretch and so on. However, the, the mass in between stays the same. We are just stretching the, st the, the uh, string, so the density may change. However, the mass, the amount of molecules in between, remains the same. So the dm, this amount of mass, equals rho zero dx, where rho zero is the, the density you know, it's the density of the string when it's just lying there. It's the same as some unknown rho times ds, which is the amount of mass if you're stretching it all around. Uh, so you can uh, also now find uh, relation between rho zero and rho, so rho being the density if you're stretching it all around, because uh, ds was lambda times dx. So if you compare, you see a rho zero equals rho times lambda, or rho equals rho zero over lambda. So if you have a big lambda, uh, if you stretch it two times, then you're basically half the density. So uh, there we have our important players, the stretch ratio, lambda norm of the RDX, the unit tangent, uh, the RDX over lambda, and finally using conservation of mass, if this, that is dm rho zero dx is also here, rho zero dx. So those are our three main ingredients.